Well, it's so good to be back with you again for another devotion, and I'm always honored to share this time with you. Uh, we all know that food is wasted every year, and I've, I've known this for years, but I didn't realize how significant the waste was. And I uh, did some research the other day and found that $161 billion of food is wasted each year. And um, we all know as far as food waste, we would say, well, it needs to be thrown out because it's gonna make somebody sick if it's you know, past expiration date and stuff like that. But what I found surprised me, uh, there's actually a large portion of that uh, $161 billion of food in the produce side of the market, uh, a lot of that is thrown away because it doesn't look right. And I found one producer, he said, if it's not perfect, then it's thrown out. For example, uh, they made the example of a carrot. You expect the carrot to be straight. You don't expect the carrot to have a, a U shape. You don't expect a potato to look like it's got the mumps or anything. You expect vegetables to have a particular look about them. Uh, and so a lot of these vegetables, a lot of these fruits are thrown away because they don't look right. They're outcasts, they're misfits. And so there's a company out there that's called Misfits and their entire business revolves around uh, vegetables and produce that they will ship to you. And these vegetables and th these fruits, they don't look like all, the, all their siblings, if I can put it that way. You know, they're, they're misshaped, they're, they're considered the outcast of, of the produce, but they're perfectly fine. They just, they need to find a home somewhere in this company called Misfits. They uh, make that possible. And so when I read that, my mind went to Acts chapter 10 and the story of Cornelius. And if you have your Bibles, I'd be honored if you'd, if you'd read here. This is, uh, I, I wish we could cover this whole thing. But uh, the Lord speaks to Peter. Peter had just went up on the housetop to pray. And Peter was an amazing person. After his conversion, 3,000 souls had got saved. He had walked on water, we know that. And the Bible even talks about his shadow would pass when he would pass people on the street. His shadow, when it would come over a person, they would be healed simply because of his shadow. But when Peter went up to the housetop to pray, he had no idea what God was fixing to do in his life. This was a person, again, very advanced in, in the Lord, if I can put it that way. But God had some other things he was wanting to teach him. And, and the, the lesson Peter learned in this chapter is a, a lesson I think we all need to learn in our Christian experience. And so let's read Acts 10 and verse 10. I'll just start there. The whole chapter is wonderful. But starting at verse 10, it says, And he, Peter, became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoken to him again the second time, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. And this is the part I love. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called saying whether Simon, which is surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek thee. And here's the key, arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And I know that was a lot of reading, but I wanted to get the picture here. Somebody that is so advanced in the faith has an issue. What, what, what we're not reading here and covering the backstory, these men that are showing up at his door, they're not Jews. They're not the chosen. They're these Gentiles. And in the Jews' minds, these are outcasts. 
But Cornelius had been praying and we know God said, I've heard your prayer and I've seen your alms. And so Peter, he's up there doubting, Lord, what did I just see in this vision? But God was showing him a, a prophetic vision of misfits, of things that the Jews would say, I'm not gonna have anything to do with that. And so God's saying, Peter, what you don't realize is as you're praying here and I'm trying to show you something, you've got misfits that are waiting at your door and you go with them because I've sent them. You go with them and you don't doubt anything I'm telling you because I love those people. I love those misfits. And you read the story, it's a beautiful story how Peter went with these three misfits and when they got back to Cornelius' his house, revival broke out and there was a great outpouring of God's Spirit. Verse 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. I think what God would have us to, to know here is that there are people in this world that have been labeled misfits. They've got scars, sometimes physical, sometimes emotional scars that they're dealing with. And so, so many things, so much baggage that they're dealing with that really only God can handle. But they're needing somebody to say, you belong here in the family of God. You may feel like you're a misfit or in, in the world's opinion, but you have a family in the family of God. I feel like what God would want us to know, just like he told Peter, I've sent them. You don't, don't doubt anything that I'm fixing to do. And, and church, listen, I feel like as time gets darker, as the world gets darker, there's gonna be people that's gonna start showing up at our churches, possibly even knocking on the door of your home and they're going to be wanting some answers. They're going to say, I, I know you say you're a Christian and I'm concerned about something. I'm scared about something because as the world gets darker, the world doesn't have the answer, friend. The church does. The Christians do. You have the answer. And so don't be surprised at what shows up on your door. You may say, oh, my goodness, not, not that person, not that person. But God says, like he said to Peter, D just do what I've told you to do and say what I've told you to say because I've sent these people to you and the world may say they're misfits, but God says they're my chosen, precious people. So this is different. I haven't done this before. Could we pray just, just before we end this devotion today that God would touch our hearts? Could we do that? Lord, I ask you today that you would give us a burden for the lost like never before. Those people that are considered outcasts, Lord, they may have made bad choices, they may have made bad decisions in their life that's brought them to the place where they are. They may be scarred, they may be bruised, they may be bent, they may be labeled a misfit. But Lord, I ask that you would help us to look beyond the sin that's so plaguing their soul and help us to look beyond that, Lord, and help us to see a soul that desperately needs a savior. Lord, help us to be your hands and feet extended so that we can reach this lost and dying world before it's ever too late. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. God bless you, friend.